So from the default setting, I can use my little DPO um, demonstration board here to um, play with um, the um, auto range feature on this thing. And this thing's been around for a while, this feature and like scope meters and things like that. Just switch on that. And then you pick a signal point and then we'll give you a useful display of whatever is there, whether it's um, AC, DC, that's a DC level. Got to give it a little bit of time to find the signal. If it looks like there's something there, you can go to the measure menu and on channel 1 you can turn on um, say frequency. Let's say we also want to know oh it's another one. Sure, why not? And that's another typical peak to peak. So we got some measurements that are going on there, so there it finds it. Move on to another. Nothing of interest there. Something here. This being the same board, you're gonna find a lot of related signals. And sometimes it will have a hard time resolving what's going on with a particular signal. Yeah, there's something. All of that, and that's what it really is. And I got the camera in my hand, but you can um, turn the auto set off, the auto range off. Now it's a little more stable, and then you can make any adjustments you wanted to. And to get your measurements back, you just press the measure button, and there they are. When I'm probing signals, I find that feature kind of handy in a lot of scopes. Even their high-end tech scopes don't have that. Of course, you got to be really careful with the high-end scopes. You don't want to blow out a channel or something like that. That's what these scopes are for. Okay, it looks like with the um, limit test, you can change your display type to dots so that you don't get such a blocky look to it. That's like kind of like what they have on text um, web page. That's what they're doing what that look is. That's why I look different. Um, look, that guy's using the same little board that I'm using over here. Pretty cool, huh? So anyhow, um, so that's how I get that, that look. Let's see what happens if I, um, what did I do? Limit set up. How about if I change that to like a hundred in this? template a little time oh yeah that, that makes it a little more apparent what you're watching for in the limits and then if you go back you can run test and you can see on the bottom there that it I guess that's screen full of acquisitions so occasionally with the limits I've selected then we're getting a little bit of a variation in there And likely if I went up to display over here and put persist, uh, say, how do I do it? Oh yeah, go to infinite like that. Now if I went back to um, limit test, it's still running. There's been three failures so far. And presumably somewhere on the screen when there's a failure, you would see a, a failure pop up on it. Um, let me try a different, this probably won't work, but let me try a different anomaly. Probably, oh yeah, now there's all kinds of failures because I'm looking at a different anomaly. This kind of gives a little bit of a look like the digital phosphor scopes. Um, 
but I'm not seeing stuff jump up on the screen like you would on even like a, like an MSO 2000 or DPO 2000 you'd see a little more glitches occurring so the system isn't that fast of acquiring and there's dead time between acquisitions and so forth Just template setup. Let's go, oops, let's go on to there. Apply template. Oh, I still got the infinite persistence on. That's probably what it doesn't like. Okay, so I've applied template to the new active signal. Go to limit test again. Running the test. Got one failure. This is a glitchy signal, and it's a pretty tough signal to catch, but probably with this scope and probe combination, it's not so much that it saw a glitch, rather that it's the limit is just close to the signal and any jitter you'd normally get. It doesn't look like this stores limits. It may, but it doesn't. It looks like you um how, how should I put this? It looks like you can define a limit that you want to use, but it doesn't look like you can have like 10 different styles of limits stored where you can activate one when you choose. I may be wrong, but um, I didn't see anything in the limit menu. I don't see anything here that would suggest to me that you can save these limits. Although you can save the outcomes from your limit testing to a disk file it looks like or your your little USB drive here if you choose so far only one failure this is kind of cool if you actually read the screen action on violation so you can select that and you can tell it to go ahead and save the image save image on that's fine of course, I don't have any stick in there, so I don't know. Maybe it won't actually do anything. Do back. So it might just laugh at me if I actually see something. If it does another fail, though, it should save that image so we can um, see what it was. I don't know if it'll actually work, though, without having a flash in there. It should. I mean, there's no reason why something like this shouldn't have that since memory is so cheap anymore. They could easily add that into the board. Okay, it looks like it found a failure, so it saved it, and it stopped. But what I'm not real sure at is when I tell it to run and start again, it doesn't... Oh, there it goes. It stopped doing it a while back. It wouldn't restart for me. So I had to reboot the machine to get it to do it. It may have been that I haven't read the instructions, so it may have been me and not it, but I wasn't real sure why that was. Anyhow, it, it saved the results, so... I'll have to take the little USB stick out and see what it looks like on the PC. Maybe you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> so there we are. Somewhere in there there is a um, a dot somewhere that touched something. Maybe that little dot there, I don't know. It doesn't highlight it for you. It doesn't tell you where the error is. I guess the expectation is that it would be a much more drastic fail under normal circumstances. But it's something. And if I would have kept the thing going, I guess it would have just kept saving to the memory stick and so you could have 40 or 50 of these or however many you wanted examples of a, of a, a violation that you could look over and look for a pattern. Here we have a fast rise signal specs about 200 picoseconds but I actually measure it at 184 with the uh, high bandwidth scope a couple of them so a 50 ohm termination because this signal source requires 50 ohm to get that kind of a leading edge so I noticed down here that it's shown 23.99993 megahertz this is your frequency that's been calculated by the span of the waveform, etc. So it looks like um, this thing may have a hardware frequency counter in it. Not sure, but I think so. A lot of times, since it's got such a short memory record, that you would think that if you zoom out, 
or zoom in way in that this would go to can't resolve it just like it can't can't resolve it up here but it's still showing it so maybe there's a hardware frequency counter in this thing bump the amplitude up a little bit this is a negative going signal so we can do something like that kind of zoom in Go to our measurements, tell it for channel 1 that we would like to see, um, it won't show frequency now because we're so far zoomed in, period, about rise time somewhere, there we are, go to back, and 1.8 nanoseconds, 1.7, something like that. We could go up to acquire, and we could tell it that we like it to average 16 four times. And then if we hit the measure button again, it'll give us a telling us that rise time is about an honest 1.820 nanoseconds. I'm not sure what the rise time is supposed to be on this for 200 megahertz. You can calculate it. It doesn't say it in the specs, which I was kind of surprised. but. There you have it. I don't think there's a zoom function in this where you can go in any closer. It will let you see trigger view. Oh, the whole point about this thing being uh, around 200 picohertz uh, rise time on this is it's way faster than the piece of test gear that you're testing, so it's pretty safe to assume that um, that it's not holding up your rise time. I mean, if you had a signal generator that could only you know, had you know, 10 second right nanosecond rise time. Then um, your scope, of course, would have a terrible rise time of around 10 nanoseconds, because that's all the faster the signal's going. So you have to use a fast signal.